firstly, what we are going to talk today, it's um, measures of disease frequency. And normally, one of the major duties of veterinary epidemiologists is to, to measure the frequency of diseases and the burden of disease into, into the populations. And to do so, uh, they use measures of disease frequency, which uh, basically uh, they are incidences, prevalences, uh, and other rates of interest. But the approach to go through through these measures is that uh, first we start counting the, the cases of a disease or the health, health events, and then describe them in the classical epidemiological triad, which is uh, place, time, and animal type. And then when we have the counts and the populations, we divide these cases by the appropriate denominator to calculate the specific rates. And then when we have the rates, we start comparing the rates between different groups and subgroups of the population so we could find uh, what's, what's going on with the, with the measured effects. And uh, starting by the counts, it's very simple enumeration of number of cases of a disease into, into a population. And then uh, it's not that very much inf epidemiological information related to counts, but still they are very useful when, when they are put into a context, context of time or context into a population where they derive from. For example, when we do counts on the on the timeline, we could derive the epidemiological curves. I mean, that's very important in, in, in epidemiology to see how, how the disease is spreading in time. And when we put them into terms of population, then we get all the incidences and prevalences and so on. And so it's very important, though, not to lose count, and because that's the, the major thing to derive all the other um, measures. So it's counting, it's first, and it's very important. The types of measurements, mathematically speaking, can be divided into ratios, proportions, and rates. And all three of them are a fraction, basically, so they are almost the same thing. And the, the, the fraction is composed by a numerator, a denominator, and a multiplier. And the, the multiplier in this case, it's depending on the measure used and puts the, 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 the fraction into a context of a population. So let's say we could have a number per a thousand animals, per a hundred thousand animals, or per a million animals. So depending by the, by the measure in question, then the multiplier is adjusted. And we will see that when we'll talk about incidences and prevalences and then other risk measures. As I said, mathematically, the, 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 the measures are, are fractions, but they do differ to each other. And so we give a meaning to the, to the differences between them. And the ratio is the having the denominator and denominator uh, mutually exclusive. So either it's one on top, either it's the other on top of the, of the counts we, we have collected. Let's, let's take let, as an example. So we count the affected animals from a disease and we put above the unaffected animals. While into a proportion, the numerator, it's a subset of the denominator. So again, going back to the, to the, to the example. So we count the number of affected animals from, from, from a certain disease and then we put those on top of the affected themselves plus the unaffected. So that's how we derive a proportion. While when we talk about a rate, the rate has the same uh, concept of a proportion, but the, the denominator is per unit of time. And then time is very important because that makes a proportion a rate and we will see it during, during the talk how, how the time has this specific role into the rates. And to illustrate a bit more the concept, it's part to part and part to whole. So let's, let's suppose we have these five puppies and of which two, two are females and three are males. 
And the part to part, it's a ratio because we say we have two males to, to three females or the vice versa, three females to two males, but they are all inter, interrelated. I mean, they, they are mutually exclusive to each other, either female or either male to the population of puppies. But if we get the whole puppies as a, as a population, and then we compare a part of it, let's say the males to the total population of puppies, we would say two to five or three to five. And that's still technically a ratio, but it's a proportional ratio. So it's a proportion in, 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 in our uh, definitions. And going to the ratios, basically ratios are uh, measures which are used to, to compare two values to each other and they are a relationship between two mutually exclusive groups. And then the formula to, to derive the ratios is specified as a number or a rate of uh, disease or events of, of counted uh, things of interest into one group above the number or rate or, or events to another group. And that's how we define a ratio. The properties and uses of a ratio are that ratios are both either a descriptive tool, either an analytical tool. And ratios can be described, let's say, like we said in the puppy example, male to male uh, uh, ratio or cases to controls and so on. But they can be used also as an analytical tool to compare uh, different characteristics of, of the populations of interests, like, like they are the risks or the odds of a disease and so on. And uh, the, the ratios mathematically can be simplified like we do with, with, the, with the normal fractions. So we can divide or sum both sides, the numerator or the, the denominator by a certain value and then simplify the fraction. In the same way are simplified also the ratios. And one of the most used techniques is that we divide both the numerator and denominator by one of those. So let's say we divide both of them by the numerator or we divide them both by the denominator. And uh, the numerator and denominator of ratios could be related or unrelated. Let's say uh, we could have, have apples above apples, but we could have also apples above oranges. So that's an unrelated uh, ratio, for example. And uh, ratios could be used to compare two different groups within uh, a variable. And to make an example, it's that a study has shown that a ratio of adult to young horses helps to decrease the aggressiveness of young horses in the pack. And this is an example of a ratio within the same variable because the group is all horses, but horses are either young or either adult. So they are uh, a category within the same group. But ratios could be also used into comparing two totally different uh, variables. And if we see a case, for example, a country has 4 million cattle and 500 veterinary private practitioners. And if we do the math, we, we, we do the fraction of them, and then we say that we have uh, 0.00125 vets per cattle. I mean, that's correct, but the problem is it's not very understandable. And what does it mean? I mean, 0.00125 vets per cattle. So to make it more understandable, we use the multiplier in this case and say that we sum them, the, 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 fra the, the fraction, we will sum it by the 10,000. And then the ratio becomes uh, 1.2 vets per 10,000 cattle. And this is much better in compared to the first, first uh, simple mathematical relation. We could go further on with the simplification and divide this one 
1.25 vets per 10,000 cattle by the numerator, which is 1.25, and then we could get one vet for, for, for every 8,000 cattle. And this is much, much better in terms of understanding what a ratio can be used and how the information could be conferred in, in terms to be understandable. Another example of a ratio and mostly used, it's a death to case ratio. And in the COVID times, we often use in the media or we read in, in, in technical reports the, the case fatality ratio, which is basically the same thing. And it's the number of deaths attributed to a particular disease during a specific period of time, and which is divided by the number of new cases of the same disease for the same period of time. And basically, it's used as a measure of the severity of, of, of the disease and what's causing. And for example, if we take rabies, rabies has a death to case ratio close to one because it's a 100% fatal disease to whichever mammal develops clinical signs of it. But if we take another disease, let's say in humans, a uh, common cold, it has a uh, death to case ratio close to zero and uh, by the way it's also related to, to to coronavirus because common cold it's also coronavirus but it's just not as deadly so it's it's the ratio of death to cases it's a comparison to the severity of, of a certain disease and that's to, to be kept in mind Uh, to take an example, we take an example of TB in humans. In a country in a year, around 15,800 new cases were reported, due, were reported due to tuberculosis. And if we do the, 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 the ratio of this and we divide by the numerator, both the denominator and the numerator, we get one death per 18 or, or 19 new cases. If we do the, the vice versa, then we divide both the numerator and the denominator by the denominator, we get, and sum them by the multiplier of 100, we get 5.3 deaths per 100 new cases. So in uh, both types, they are correct. I mean, both, both ways are correct. It depends how we wish and what would suit better in, in describing this. And that's no, no correct way, but it's just the way which you would put at the unit time. I mean, it's one death or you want the new cases to be rounded to, to 100. So that's, that's the way how to look at it. We see the proportions, and as we said before, proportions are used to compare subgroups with the whole uh, population, and usually are expressed as decimals, fractions, and percentages. And the calculation is done as the number of animals or disease events uh, with a particular characteristic over a total number of animals of which the numerator is a subset and then multiplied by the multiplier of choice. And the proportions basically are used mainly as uh, descriptive measures in, in studies and in, in describing the, the disease uh, frequency and shows the amount of a disease that can be attributed to, to a particular exposure as a rule of thumb to, to defer the, the proportions from the other, other measures is that the proportion, in the proportion, the numerator must be included into the denominator. So it's like we said, affected plus the unaffected, and that's the total population of interest. And also proportions can be easily converted to ratios or ratios could be converted to proportions because they have a uh, pretty much same nature, but we have to know beforehand the counts of those in order to, to convert them. Let's take an example of a proportion. Let's say 
a farmer has two sick cows, but in total the guy has only two cows. So the, 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 the disease in his, his population, it's 100%. While in another herd, uh, there are 50 cattle and there are again two sick cows. So we get a proportion of 4% of, of disease. And then we could compare which, which, in which of the population the disease is more, more, more abundant. But the point is here that a proportion without, the, without specifying the population where it's derived from, it's meaningless. So it's of paramount importance to always include when reporting proportions also the population so they will get meaning in, in terms of comparing them. One of the examples of, of measures related to proportions is the proportionate mortality. And proportionate mortality, it's proportion of deaths in a specified population for a period of time that can be attributed to different causes. And if we sum up all the causes of this proportionate uh, mortalities, we could have all, all of them should add up to, to 100%. And these proportions are not rates because the denominator includes the deaths and not the size of the population in which the counts derived are derived from. So they, they are proportions and not, not rates. And to take an example, it's uh, to see, for example, the, the number of or the proportionate mortality of humans by animal type, and which, which of the animals kills the most of humans. It was broadcasted in BBC. And we could see that uh, almost 90% of human deaths is derived from mosquitoes, unthinkable, but still also, for example, dogs, which are the best friend of, of, of humans, are ranked the third with although with 3% of, of, of proportionate mortality. And if we see and we add up the proportionate mortalities, they all, all sum up to 100. So that's one of the indicators where proportions are used to, to measure the disease frequency or mortality or morbidity and so on. The rates are a measure of a frequency of a disease where time is it's the unit which makes them differ from, from rates and from proportions. And it's a disease where, which occur in a defined population over a period of time. And rates are usually useful to compare disease frequencies among different populations of different sizes in different uh, locations and in different time periods. So th those are quite very much used in, in, in veterinary epidemiology. And the rates are like proportions in, in terms of, of computation, in, in terms of mathematics, but as we said, they include the time component. And the time component in rates, actually it's a debated issue and controversial among different epidemiologists where some of the groups uh, restrict the term rate to be used only when it's expressed per unit of time. And if we think in this sense, it's a measure of speed of a disease spreading into a population. I mean, think about like, uh, like you are driving the car and the speedometer shows you 100 kilometers per hour. And in terms of diseases, we could have uh, 100 cases per day, 100 cases per year, and so on. So we have the time unit telling us how fast the disease is spreading into the populations of interest. And that's make that rate. It shows the piece, the speed it's taking the, the disease. But there is another group of epidemiologists which use this term a bit more loosely and which is basically more a proportion, technically speaking, but it's commonly used in the language as a rate. And these are, for example, when we have the numerator and the, of, the, of the population and the and denominator and use them as a rate. And these are, for example, the attack rates. But again, these are proportions in terms of, of our understanding. And so 
it's preferred to use the term rates always where there is a time component attached to it. Let's take an example. For example, into a communal pasture where animal goes for, for a couple of days or for a week and then all different farmers of the, of the village sends them there and they are managed as a single flock. We have uh, two sheep staying for, for a week, three more sheep staying for five days, and one sheep stays only for two days. And out of these animals, one of them developed uh, enterotoxinia. So if we go with the concepts we learned so far with the, with the rates and proportions and so on, we would say that we get uh, one out of six sheep sick, or we could say we have approximately 70% of the flock which developed the disease. But however, if we think a bit more, and we had different timings of exposures of the sheep, of the different sheep toward the clostridial pathogen. So how do we account for, for the timing of exposure to the pathogens? I mean, they, they are more at risk and less at risk between these, these animals. So let's see a bit, and we put into work a sheep day, which is, uh, a unit which takes account for the different lengths that the sheep or the sheep have been at risk for different periods of time. So we had uh, two sheep which contributed six, seven days each. So we get 14 sheep days. And then we get uh, three sheep by five days and then we get 15 sheep days. And then there is one sheep which stayed only two days in the pasture and then we get uh, two sheep days. So in total, we get 31 sheep days. And the rate of enterotoxemia in this pasture as a rate is one sick animal per 31 sheep days. And that's uh, basically an incidence, but we will talk more and expand the concept in, an, in, in another another lecture, so we'll reserve that for, for later. So thank you for this, and uh, we'll see you next time.